The University of North Georgia proudly welcomes our graduates and guests. Please take your seat and turn your attention to the video boards as we begin your commencement ceremony. Leadership is fueled by vision and passion. Leadership is service with empathy, creativity, and integrity. Leadership is seeking continuous improvement for yourself and your community. Since 1873, the University of North Georgia has prepared generations of civic, professional, and military leaders. Today, UNG is a leading regional university that serves students across five campuses and online with educational pathways ranging from associate degrees to doctoral programs. And as one of only six senior military colleges in the nation, UNG UNG holds designations as a state leadership institution and as the Military College of Georgia. UNG's national reputation and student profile are growing stronger each year, and we remain focused on student success and academic excellence at all levels. Across UNG, our incredible faculty and staff are scholars and mentors who inspire service, inquiry, and creativity, and resume-building experiences help each student fulfill their potential. We know the value of determination and teamwork in and out of the classroom. And this spirit pushes our students to excel on the field, serve our communities, and explore the world. When the day is done, the real measure of our success lies in who our graduates become. Outstanding leaders for a diverse and global society. The University of North Georgia. If you are able, please rise for the processional.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Sorry, I have to take a minute and take all this in. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. I'm just looking around, what a crowd. Graduates, you are very, very special people. Look at all these folks that showed up for you. Yes. Well, good morning and welcome. My name is Mike Shannon, and I have the privilege as, of serving as the 21st president of the University of North Georgia. It is my sincere honor to welcome you to this, our fall 2023 commencement ceremony. Welcome to the University of North Georgia. Welcome to the Military College of Georgia, the Army Senior Military College. And welcome to a university destined to be the most dynamic, innovative, legacy-making university in America. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today we celebrate commencement. It's one of the most cherished traditions of the academic community. We celebrate the culmination of these graduates in their academic journey here at the University of North Georgia and the beginning of the next chapter of their lives. On behalf of the entire University of North Georgia community, I extend a warm and sincere congratulations to each and every one of our graduates, to all of you gathered here today, their families, and to their friends. As we begin our ceremony, please join me in thanking Dr. Chuck Robertson, our faculty marshal, and Dr. Joe Chapman for leading our professional. Please give them a round of applause. This part's a big deal. I would be remiss if I did not recognize all of the mothers, the fathers, the husbands, the wives, the partners, the children, the grandparents, the relatives, and all the friends who stood behind our graduates and assisted them throughout their college journey. Can we take a moment and give you a round of applause? Yeah, you, you earned it just as much as they did. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you for your support of our graduates. Graduates, today is an incredibly special day. You are donning an academic regalia, which symbolizes your achievement and commitment to your education and professional disciplines. The privileges of wearing these robes is an honor an honor you have rightfully earned. At this point, and if you are able, please stand for the singing of our national anthem, which will be performed by the University of North Georgia's Men Quartet under the direction of Dr. John Broman, faculty, staff, and graduates. Please keep your TAMs and mortarboards on. We're helping you with your hairdo. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave, or the 
land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, gentlemen. Would you please be seated? It is my honor as provost to join President Shannon in welcoming you to today's ceremony. UNG is designated as a state leadership institution because leadership development permeates so many aspects of the UNG experience. We are committed to that role and using our institutional values of excellence, student focus, integrity, engagement, and service to help our students graduate as leaders with character. Leadership author Tim Elmore describes leadership like an iceberg. The 10% above the water is your skill. The 90% below the water is your character. The sum of your self-discipline, your core values, your sense of identity, and how you express yourself. As UNG graduates, you have learned the importance of character and the value of teamwork, of perseverance, and leadership. It is my honor to introduce one of your peers who has prepared a special message for you. Today's student speaker, Carly Blankenship, is a political science major graduating cum laude from Rocky Face, Georgia. Carly first came to UNG when COVID-19 was still in its beginning stages, and people were still unsure about what was yet to come. Because of this, many clubs and opportunities were limited. However, as those opportunities started to open up again, she was lucky enough to be elected as the Director of Communications for the Student Government Association and as Vice President for the Model United Nations Club. As a representative of Australia at the Model UN, SRMNUN conference in Charlotte this past spring, Blankenship was awarded the Best Delegate Award with her committee. She has also interned with a small private council law firm and at the White County District Attorney's Office. She did all of this while working her way through leadership to become a manager at Chick-fil-A in Dawsonville. As a political science major, Blankenship has not been able, excuse me, has been able to not only make valuable connections within the political science and international affairs department, but with many others as well. She has participated in Greek life through Delta Zeta sorority and held a position in that organization as well. Please help me welcome Carly Blankenship as our student speaker. Good morning, faculty, students, families, friends, and distinguished guests. I'd like to extend a special welcome to the UNG graduating class of 2023. We did it! I would also like to extend a very brief apology to my family, who I conveniently forgot to inform that I would be speaking today. So, sorry, Mom and Dad, but Merry Christmas. We live our life in chapters a sentiment that has been echoed through the ages. My mom said this to me recently as I was complaining about how sad I was to leave college. And while I'm sure I internally rolled my eyes at the time, as I stand here today, I know how true those words are. Life is a book that we ourselves are the authors of. Through plot twists, character developments, prequels, and antagonists, we live our stories. As a child, I was taught the joy of a good book. My family was lucky enough to own a small bookstore in my hometown, and through that, I was able to fall in love with reading, more specifically with stories. My favorite thing about stories, everybody has one and no two are the same. As an incoming freshman, I had no idea what these years would hold for me. Anticipation, excitement, and fear all bundled up into one very unsure 18-year-old. But as this chapter comes to a close, I can't help but to be so thankful for the memories I have created here, to the stories, the plots, and the narratives I now get to be a part of, to midnight McDonald's runs and sneaking friends into your dorm room late at night when your roommate is sleeping in his class at 8 a.m., <laughs> to building giant snowmen and other sculptures on the drill field, if you know, you know, 
<laughs> and sledding down the library hill, we have made memories that will last us a lifetime. I have been lucky enough over recent years to get to know the faculty here, and in them, I have found a lot of my confidence. Even through the times that I struggled to keep going or push through, I had amazing people like Dr. Kelly, Dr. Meacham, and Dr. Minor to keep me encouraged. Without the people that have been there for us throughout this journey, we couldn't have made it here. So many of us have made meaningful connections that will last us through our professional or academic careers. I encourage you not to forget those that have helped us grow as we turn over this new page in our stories. Yes, this chapter is ending, and in many ways that is bittersweet. But the amazing thing about books is that when one chapter ends, a new one starts. These last few years have been foundational in our lives. Here, within the safety of these walls, we have grown into who we are. I can't wait to see who we become. If you know me at all, you know this speech would not be complete without a quote from Taylor Swift. So here you go. The scary news is you're on your own now. But the cool news is you're on your own now. So with that, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to our families for standing by our sides throughout this journey, for making sure we were taken care of when we couldn't always do that for ourselves. Thank you to our friends that have been there and grown with us during this time, and to the teachers that have greatly impacted us as people. And lastly, I'd like to thank all of you. Thank you for sharing this with me. It hasn't been easy, but we did it. We are graduated. <laughs> I encourage all of you to single out those who have made meaningful impacts in your lives throughout this chapter. For me, that's my family, so please excuse me while I make a few last remarks. Kevin Blankenship, my dad. Thank you for telling me you were proud of me when I wasn't always proud of myself. Colin and Laura, my oldest brother and his sweet wife. Thank you for watching me grow and supporting me through this time. Caden, my baby brother and favorite sibling, sorry Colin. You always show me how to have a gentle heart and I hope that always stays with you. And lastly, to my mom. Beth Blankenship, you are my best friend and you always will be. I love you and thank you for being by my side every step of this journey. Thank you and congratulations class of 2023. I couldn't be prouder to be one of you. Thank you, Carly. You were fantastic. Wow. What an outstanding representative of the University of North Georgia. And Carly, we look forward to watching where your UNG education will take you. Congratulations. And thank you on behalf of all of your peers for representing them so well. Let's give Carly one more round of applause. Before we continue, it's really important for me to introduce you to the team who every day makes the life, the mission, and the work of the University of North Georgia happen. This is a team sport, uh, and I get to be the quarterback, but I would like to introduce you to some of my colleagues who are here with us today. Please allow me to introduce them, and to my colleagues, please stand as I call your name. Dr. Jennifer Harazi, Senior Vice President of Strategy and my Chief of Staff. Dr. Keith Antonia, Interim Senior Vice President and Superintendent of the Cadet Leadership Academy. Mr. Jeffrey Tarnowski, Vice President for University Advancement. Dr. Stephen Smith, Vice President of Regional Campuses. Dr. Allison Paul, Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. Ms. Jill Holman, our Director of Internal Audit. Ms. Mary Rob Plunkett, our Director of Athletics. Dr. Brian Corrigan, Professor of English and Reader for today's ceremony. And ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat with Dr. Corrigan today. Dr. Lawan Simpson-Wilkie, Dean of University College. Dr. Jeff Turk, Dean of the Lewis F. Rogers Institute for Environmental and Spatial Analysis. Dr. John Leba, Dean of the College of Science and Mathematics. 
Dr. Christopher Jesperson, Dean of the College of Arts and Letters. Colonel Brian Kirk, Professor of Military Science. And someone you'll be hearing from in a moment, Mr. Jared Patterson, Alumni Relations Officer for our young alumni. Ladies and gentlemen, would you give my teammates a round of applause? Before I introduce our guest speaker, I'd like to also introduce you to some other of our teammates. Uh, and these people are the lifeblood of our university. They are the ones who have spent hours, and for some of your kids, more hours, with your kids as they have learned and struggled and mastered their academic programs. These are people who work long hours, who grade papers, who sit in classrooms, who sit in offices, who do hard things to help your students learn not what to think, but how to think. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to recognize my colleagues from our faculty. Will all of our faculty please stand and let us give you a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a phenomenal group of faculty and you can be incredibly proud that your loved one was able to learn and study under all of these fine people. It is now my extreme privilege to introduce today's commencement speaker, Mr. Carville Chalk. Carville is not a stranger. He's a White County boy, born in Augusta, but at four years old moving to White County and you'll learn here in a minute, uh, spent a couple of days on this campus. He currently is the Deputy Director for Aviation Technology at the U.S. Army Combat Capabilities Development Command Aviation and Missile Center in the Technology Development Directorate in Huntsville, Alabama. Carville leads an organization of more than 200 Army civilians, military officers, and enlisted personnel working on developing the Army's future vertical lift modernization a reality. This is in partnership with numerous stakeholders across the United States Army, the Department of Defense, industry, and academia. As I said earlier, Carville is no stranger to the University of North Georgia because you see graduates, he graduated from here in 1994 with his bachelor's degree in physics. He went on to complete graduate studies at the University of Tennessee Space Institute in Tullahoma, Tennessee, earning Master's of Science degrees in Engineering Science and Flight Research. His Army civilian career began at the Aviation Technical Test Center at what is now Fort Novacell, Alabama, as a flight test engineer. He served in the flight test community for 14 years in roles of increasing responsibility. Flight test engineer, test director, assistant division chief, and finally, chief engineer of the flight test directorate. He attended the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School at the Patuxent River Naval Air Station in Maryland and graduated from the test project engineering course in airborne systems in the early 2000s. Carville has logged over 80 hours in more than 10 aircraft. Following his flight test career, Carville moved into test project management with the Redstone Test Center. He is a recipient of the Civilian Service Achievement Medal and the Civilian Service Accommodation Medal and holds advanced acquisition certifications in test and evaluation, program management, and engineering. He is also a licensed pilot, I hope so, <laughs> and advanced ground instructor. He is a former member of the U.S. Air Force Auxiliary, Auxiliary the Civil Air Patrol, where he earned the SPOTS Award as a cadet. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give a warm Dahlonega, North Georgia welcome to one of our own, Mr. Carville Chalk. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, I could not have imagined when I graduated 
<clears throat> nearly 30 years ago that I'd stand at a podium and have the opportunity to address a commencement ceremony here at now the Uni University of North Georgia. So I'll begin with some uh, thank yous, uh, first of all, to President Shannon and uh, Dr. Gill, the provost, for having me here. Uh, for you uh, who are at, in attendance today, I thank the uh, faculty and staff of the University of North Georgia. You stand on a great legacy of uh, professors and lecturers uh, that I participated with in my time here between 1990 and 1994. Also, thank you to uh, the graduates who are here today. Congratulations to you and uh, to your family and your friends who have been uh, your support and encouragement uh, to help you achieve this success today. And uh, lastly, a thank you to community, uh, the community of Dahlonega and the North Georgia region and all the friends of the University of North Georgia who uh, continue to support this fine academic institution. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my own family, uh, my mother and my late father, uh, Donna and Dan Chalk, and uh, my sister Danny, who is also an alumni of the uh, University of North Georgia, uh, for their encouragement across the years, and my wife Jacqueline, who's here today, uh, who has been with me uh, since we met in vector calculus, uh, partial differential equations, and thermodynamics at graduate school, and without whose help I would not be standing here today, my career would not have been successful. I don't think I'd have made it through those without her, much less the rest of life. Graduates, I hope that you have enjoyed your time here at the University of North Georgia, whether it be on the Dahlonega campus or any of the now other four campuses that combine to create this fabulous university. Indeed, UNG is a very special place, and I can say now, more than I knew 30 years ago, how special it is. Academically, collegially, socially, and professionally, it's a unique place among academic institutions, and I think as you go along, you will treasure the days you spent here with your peers and with your professors more than you can now know. It is, as uh, our student speaker said, it is an inflection point in life. It's the end of a chapter and the beginning of another. It's one of many of life's transitions that you will face. And my suspicion is you'll face more life transitions in the next decade than you have in the past two. As you begin your careers, your families, as you move from this place to the next step in your professional career, there's more to come and more change uh, to, to experience. I want to say a special thank you and congratulations to those uh, who commissioned last night into the United States Army, whether active, reserve, or guard. Um, it is a privilege, and I mean this with all sincerity, to represent thousands upon thousands of Army civilians who serve day in and day out to support you, uh, the soldier. It's our goal to provide you the best training and equipment so that when the need calls for armed conflict, you are well equipped and prepared to uh, be victorious in, in battle. I would also offer both to you who are civilians and those of you who graduate uh, as, a, uh, as a cadet and go on to commission, the opportunity you've had to serve together in this environment is uh, indicative of what you'll have in the Army, uh, whether you choose to serve as a civilian or military. The experience that you've gained here is valuable that way also. It was really interesting, it was uh, fascinating to come back into Dahlonega uh, Friday morning uh, to join with uh, some of the folks here at UNG for a lunch and a tour. I knew coming into town that things would have changed. I didn't realize how much. Uh, as I drove around campus and as we drove around town, it's amazing what Dahlonega and UNG have become. Uh, one thing is still the same, parking is still a nightmare. <laughs> but when we were here, we. We also had uh, multi-level parking. We just parked on top of each other without the help of a garage. So I'm, I'm glad to see that that improvement has been made. And looking at Price Memorial Hall, the gold steeple still looks uh, as it did before, only better. Rogers Hall still looks as it did then, not any better. <laughs> I spent some time in Dunlap Hall for math, English, French, and psychology. Uh, which actually turned to my benefit in my Army career, and I'll speak to that later. A little bit of time in Young Hall for pol political science and sociology, and even one class in the basement of Memorial Hall for Calculus Three in a very warm and cramped room, which made getting through series equations all that much more difficult. North Georgia is also a special place. Sorry, the University of North Georgia is also a special place. It's not many places I've ever been, if any, since where you could hear, and to, 
you and the Corps, you have to tell me if uh, you still have company greetings. Do you greet your sergeants and your officers in the morning? Yes, yes. These are the two that I remember. Good morning, Sergeant Charlie Company, cold steel, quick to kill. Or good morning, Sir Delta Company, death from above. It's the only place in America where you could hear those things and feel welcome. <laughs> I also remember Reveille. There were a few days I was here early enough to hear it, often late enough to hear retreat and hear the cannon sound, and very, very rarely did I ever hear taps. I want to thank the faculty who helped me between 1990 and 94. I won't mention them all, but the physics department particularly, uh, Dr. Wynne Pendleton, Claude Elliott, Bob Lear, and Joe Jones, they really invested in me. Ms. Elsa Ann Gaines and Dr. Jim Ewing out of the uh, English department, along with Dr. Brian Corrigan, though I never had a class with him. Uh, we had a lot of interactions in leadership circles. Mr. Edward Green is here from the math department. Uh, I had uh, at least differential equations and a calculus class or two with him, along with Mr. Dave Pandras, and uh, their foundation paved the way for me to succeed in a difficult subject. And there are so many more here at North Georgia who invested for my future. You know, North Georgia is a special place, um, five ways in which I really was prepared by my time here. First of all, academics, and that's across all departments. There was then, and I know today, there remains a dedication to excellence and to teaching by your faculty and your staff, and I so do appreciate that. I appreciate the liberal arts approach that this school still offers, where even as a physics major, I was uh, not only enticed but drawn to take advanced foreign language studies in French and uh, English, enjoying uh, Southern Lit as a junior level class with Ms. Uh, Gaines at the time. I had opportunities to learn how to teach and how to speak by instructing physics and astronomy labs, giving planetarium shows, one of those even in French. Leadership opportunities like Omicron, Delta Kappa, and the Society of Physics Students. And the time invested in me by professors of this college on topics other than just academics, I cannot say how grateful I am for that. But the other thing that you and I share in learning is the uh, the ideas of critical thinking, logic, and reason, where, whether it's in physics class, learning to draw your free body diagrams, labeling your governing equations, your assumptions, summing forces and moments, and eventually solving for X, or learning how to write good essays with an outline and compelling statements, all of these contributed to a successful career. I left here in the fall of 94 to pursue graduate studies at the University of Tennessee Spates Institute. I had the goal of joining the US Air Force. Don't hold that against me. I should have known from the outset the Air Force wasn't a place for me, and if the service was, will, services will allow a little bit of good-natured humor, I should have known that because I was never in the golf club at high school or college. <laughs> for those of you in the Air Force, my apologies for those of you in the Army, hua. So I, I completed my graduate studies there. Um, I took on a first job. I realized that optics and lasers were fun, but not as fun as flying, and I went back and got a second master's degree in flight research. And uh, through some connections through my professors, I joined the Army as a civilian, starting my work there in the summer of 2000. Much like you, who swore in yesterday evening to commission as cadets in January of 2001, I stood in an uh, administrative building at then Fort Rucker, Alabama, in a small corner with a human resources specialist by my side, faced a flag in a corner, raised my right hand, and swore the same oath that you cadets swore last night to become second lieutenants. And I've continued that service to the Army with the, the goal in mind of doing what I could to apply my education, training, and experience to help build the nation's aviation fighting systems. I've had the privilege and opportunity to work in that environment since then. And uh, like many of us who were in or serving in the Army at that time, September 11, 2001 was a turning point and so the predominance of my career in the Army, I've been with other civilians and soldiers with an Army at war. I worked in test and evaluation. The motto for that organization is truth in testing. The motto of this organization, the University of North Georgia, is truth and wisdom. And I think as you go, one of the characteristics you can carry with you is to strive to discern the truth, pass that information along to the leaders and the people that you serve, so that they can make wise decisions about what they're to do in their roles and responsibilities. I was privileged to help field and be a part of the fielding of, of major uh, helicopter systems such as the UH-60M Blackhawk and the CH-47F Chinook, 
all of those physics, cal physics classes and those calculus classes gave me the opportunity to learn about all the governing equations that uh, direct us into how we conduct technical flight tests to measure the performance and safety characteristics of these helicopters for our soldiers, for our airborne soldiers, for our soldiers on the ground. But I've got to admit, even at test pilot school where I spent a lot of time flying in jets and uh, learning, how to test, um, learning how to test weapons and communication and navigation systems, I spent more time, this is for the English department, I spent more time writing, rewriting, and grading and critiquing other people's works than I ever did flying or analyzing data. The power of words in what you're about to do is incredibly important. And the power, of, the power of written words is especially important. So important that as I left the flight test community as the chief engineer over aviation flight test and I was given a farewell pack, plaque, they glued to it at the bottom a red pen. That was the reputation I had as I left, not my technical expertise in analyzing data or conducting flight tests, but in writing and rewriting technical reports and documents so that as senior leaders read those, they had a clear understanding of what the capabilities and limitations of our aircraft would be so that they could make good decisions. Went through another transformation in 2018, uh, although the Army was still at part in war. The Army made a, uh, a big decision to establish a brand new four-star command, the Army Futures Command. By this time, I had joined the Science and Technology Organization, and rather than uh, truth in testing, our goal here was to discover, develop, demonstrate, and deliver advanced capabilities for our aviation warfighter. I joined the uh, Combat Capabilities Development Command on April 1st, no kidding, on April 1st, 2019, where I was the chief engineer for aviation science and technology, uh, then rising to the position I have today as the uh, deputy director for that activity. I and my team of leaders uh, work in the areas of basic and applied research and advanced technology development to meet the Army's goals for its modernization priorities. Long range precision fires goes after engaging our enemies at range, next gen combat vehicle, goes after protecting our soldiers on the ground as they enter the fight, and future vertical lift, the Army's number three priority, is all about bringing advanced aviation technology to the warfighter. Of course, everything's network connected. That's the Army's fourth priority. Air and missile defense to defend our soldiers on the move into battle and to finally improve so soldier lethality and survivability. The places to serve within the Army to use your science, technology, engineering, and mathematics background are rife and they cross the country, from the Army Research Lab to the Chemical Biological Center, to a center focused exclusively on research and development for soldiers, ground vehicle systems, aviation and missiles, armaments, and then one organization that has more acronyms than the North Georgia College and State University, the Military College of Georgia did in the mid and late 90s. Communications, command and control, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, all of these areas are out to develop technology to meet our warfighters' needs as we look to counter um, increasing threats from our adversaries, our near and near-peer adversaries across the European and the Indo-PACOM theater. To accomplish that, the Army has four goals for its future vertical lift, future long-range assault, a decision that the Army's already made to procure an advanced tilt rotor aircraft. I'm proud to say that the science and technolo technology organization I lead had a very key role in bringing that technology to the point where it's ready to be procured by the Army. We continue to support the development of an armed reconnaissance helicopter as the Army pursues uh, through a competitive prototyping strategy that weapon system. We've already improved our unmanned aircraft systems and we continue to work in ways that make our uh, avionics and communications and weapon systems technologies interchangeable and easy to upgrade. One of those key tenets for open systems approach is so that we can beat our enemies at the bank as well as on the battlefield. The faster that we can upgrade our systems and stay ahead of our enemies will keep us, uh, will continue to give us an advantage in the 2030s and the 2040s. In applying my expertise uh, for, that I learned here in physics and my graduate studies, I lead over 15 technical areas in our group. Computational air mechanics and experimental air mechanics use uh, the results of wind tunnel tests to develop high fidelity modeling and simulation of rotorcraft and fixed wing aircraft. Vehicle management controls, we work to develop fly-by-wire flight control systems. And with the advances in autonomy and artificial intelligence, we'll soon have helicopters, that, helicopters and unmanned, uncrewed aircraft that can fly themselves 
into the most difficult and dangerous terrain and missions for the Army and preserve our soldiers' lives. Concept design and assessment, we look 10, 15, 20 years in the future, try to predict technology trends and make those useful in our own systems. Fundamental technologies for gas turbine engines, transmissions, aircraft structures, all of these things are part of every aviation weapon systems. And my team has expertise in every area, many with PhDs, most with, uh, with master's degrees, and all of them with science, technology, engineering, or math as a baseline. But there also is under, underpinning expertise that's required to make the Army work. It's not just engineers and scientists that help us go. We need specialties in human resources, finance, program management, strategic planning, cybersecurity, airworthiness qualifications, safety, quality, and reliability. And I know that many of you have studied here in these different areas and that you have a place to serve, whether it's within the U.S. government, Department of Defense in the Army, or whether it's with uh, one of the many in industry partners or other academic institutions. I know that today we're graduating the uh, Colleges of Arts and Letters, Science, Mathematics, and the Institute for Environmental and Spatial Analysis. I promise I'm almost done. I'm trying to speak at one and a quarter speed to meet my timeline. I'm sure I'm over it already. But let me just tell you, there's a place for each of you in what we do. English, writing, rewriting, the power of the written word so as to convey truth and information so, wisdom, uh, so leaders can make wise decisions. Modern languages, as I mentioned to you, I had uh, French while I was here. And at a recent uh, bilateral uh, research review with our partners in France, uh, uh, with the help, a little bit of help from Google Translate and uh, recollections of what uh, the French department taught me here, uh, I delivered a 15 minute address in French. I did that here when I was uh, working in the planetarium, so thanks to the arts and letters department. Psychology, we have uh, four engineering psychologists that work on my team who do human factors engineering and cognitive research. One of the burgeoning areas of technology advancement for the Army is reducing the cognitive workload on our soldiers so they can think less about the systems they operate and more about the battle that they have to conduct. For those of you in the business area, law and contracts prevail in an Army that seeks to partner with industry and academia to get its work done. And if you don't think running a government business is hard, come visit me sometime. We'll sit down with our resource management folks and figure out how to spend all your money to zero every year without making a profit and yet still be financially viable. It's a challenge. And then, of course, within the science and mathematic arena, uh, you, those of you who are in chemistry, there's aviation, rocket fuels, and rocket energetics materials that require chemists. In math, taking statistics, artificial intelligence, and data science, that gives us the great power of analytics against big data to help the Army maintain its equipment and its fleet and also analyze recruiting trends. I've already talked about physics and all it's done to help me. So just know that all of what you've learned, there's a place for you out there to serve and deliver on what UNG has invested in you. So I want to give you a challenge as I close. The Army has uh, four priorities and they have seven values. No, there's not going to be 11 things you have to write down. I want to start with Army values. President Shannon alluded to these last night at the commissioning ceremony. They're formed out of a uh, mnemonic for the word leadership, L-D-R-S-H-I-P, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I don't want you to remember all seven, but I do want you to remember two, integrity and selfless service. The Army has four priorities. I'm going to list them in reverse order, and I'm going to apply them to you. First of all, the Army is about reform. That's a regular assessment of what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why, and looking to make sure you're delivering effective outcomes. You and I should always be about reform in what we do for the people that we serve. Modernization is a priority for the Army. For us, as individuals, it's about lifelong learning. Whether you stop with a bachelor's degree or continue to a master's or a PhD, there's never an end to learning, just another beginning. So make sure that you are modernizing yourself. There's readiness, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual readiness. Others have already talked about living out of the core values that you have. And those core values should guide you to keep your mind, body, emotions, 
and the spiritual aspect of your existence always on the ready. And lastly, I'll mention people first. This is the Army's number one priority. In fact, it supersedes all the other three. People first, and that means having a positive impact on those closest to you. You can have the best positive impact on the people closest to you by living with integrity and serving selflessly. You can have a future of hope in what you do having an impact. I told you when I uh, began this speech, I showed up to North Georgia College and I had the high ideals of becoming a pilot in the Air Force and an astronaut. I didn't achieve any of those goals. Um, I tried to join the Air Force twice. I was met with uh, a selection notification and then problems with flight, physical, flight physicals both times. During my academic career at graduate school, I pursued a PhD and I didn't pass the qualifying exams. When I showed up to do technical work, I made some big mistakes, multi-thousand dollar mistakes in my early career as a flight test engineer. Later in my flight test engineering career, I made some professional mistakes. Instead of trying to serve those who led me, I was focused on self-serving. I was often poorly prepared and on, a, and on a regular occasion too proud to ask for help. And that caused a detriment to me and those I served. I had great mentors who led me and guided me through that, and they taught me a lot. And as far as it goes at home, I allowed career and other goals to distract me from serving my family, my wife, my children, those closest around me. Fortunately, in 2018 and across 2019, um, my spiritual fitness changed as God revealed to me the error of my ways, showed me the pride, the hypocrisy, and the rebellion I'd been living in, and he changed me from the inside out to begin to serve with humility. Don't wait 30 years to figure that out. Start today. Do the next right thing. Walk out of this place today determined to serve others in humility, and when you need help, ask. Your leaders, God is going to place people around you who have the information and the strength that you need. You can't do this on your own. If you try like I did, you'll make mistakes. It'll have a negative impact on others and it'll be a detriment to yourself. You begin at a ticket here, a bachelor's degree, a master's, a PhD, whatever it is. It's not a ticket for you. It's a, an obligation for you to serve others with it. As you live, seek to have integrity. Be transparent and honest in all your relationships. Don't be one thing on the outside, something different on the inside. Don't treat your parents and family one way, your peers at work something different, and think that you can hold it all together. Integrity begins within, so challenge yourself to be a person of integrity. The Bible speaks in the Proverbs, it says, let a wise person listen and increase in learning and let a discerning person obtain guidance. That's a short way of saying what I've taken a long way to tell you. In the New Testament, in John chapter 18, Pontius Pilate asked Jesus Christ this question. He says, what is truth? And if you go and read the rest of the passage, he doesn't stand around to get the answer. I encourage you, if you're seeking truth and wisdom, learn to listen to others and be discerning. And when seeking the truth, stop long enough to hear the answer. Last thing. Gratitude. Um, I had this written down because I didn't know that I could uh, figure out how to say it well. Before you leave today, before you leave here in ways that make coming back here increasingly difficult, take time to express gratitude. Many people in this auditorium who are with you today have spent their precious time investing in you these last several years. Make sure they know it make sure they know you recognize it and that you appreciate it. I'm not sure I did that before I left. So briefly to those members of the North Georgia College faculty and staff from 1990 to spring 1994, thank you. Dr. Wynne Pendleton, Claude Elliott, Bob Lear, Joe Jones, Miss Elsa Ann Gaines, Dr. Jim Ewing, Mr. Dave Pandras, Dr. Edward Green. Mr. Guy Oliver, Dr. Sally Allen, Dr. Thomas Richardson, Mr. John Chomore, Ms. LaVon Persky, Ms. Dora Sutton, Ms. Billy Thurman, and Mr. Gary Steffi. I know this list isn't exhaustive, but it represents the many who made an impact on me and those who invested in my future. They've done the same for you. My story is no different than the story of thousands of other graduates, and it can be your story too. 
selfless service, integrity, and gratitude. Carry those things forward with you and start today. Thank you for having me. Congratulations, and I look forward to seeing your success in the years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chalk, for your inspiring and thoughtful message. Graduates, as the university's chief academic officer, I recognize the important role of our faculty in helping you to identify and develop your potential and to prepare you for leadership wherever life takes you. We've just heard a very moving story of the impact of our faculty. I commend our faculty for their commitment to our students' personal and professional development and for their leadership and dedication to their disciplines. And I'd like to invite all of the members of the faculty, including those on the platform, to rise again so that we may recognize you. Would you please let us recognize your impact on our students? Thank you. Among our graduates today are students who have surpassed the academic standards set forth by our faculty. And it is my pleasure to recognize these honor graduates for their commitment and their dedication. The names of these students are listed in the program and they will be recognized individually as they receive their diplomas. So I would ask at this point that you please hold your applause until all groups stand. Will the baccalaureate students who are graduating summa cum laude please stand and remain standing? These students have earned a grade point average between 3.90 and a 4.0 on a 4.0 scale. Will the baccalaureate students who are graduating magna cum laude please stand and remain standing? These students have earned a grade point average between a 3.70 and a 3.89 on a 4.0 scale. Will the baccalaureate students who are graduating cum laude please stand and remain standing? These students have earned a grade point average between a 3.50 and a 3.69 on a 4.0 scale. Will all of our associate level students who are graduating with distinction please stand and remain standing. These students have earned a grade point average of a 3.5 on a 4.0 scale. Let us congratulate all of these outstanding graduates. Thank you, you may be seated. Members of our Corps of Cadets who ranked in the top 20% of nearly 6,000 cadets on the Army's National Order of Merit list will graduate as distinguished military graduates. This is the highest honor an ROTC, stu ROTC student can achieve. This year, UNG has 17 distinguished military graduates, five of whom ranked in the top 10% nationally. Will the distinguished military graduates please stand? The Honors Program at UNG cultivates a community of engaged scholars who have demonstrated excellence in academics, service, and leadership. Completion of the Honors Program includes involvement in activities outside the classroom and service to the institution and local community. Will all graduates who are members of the Honors Program please stand and remain standing? Academic Honors Societies recognize students who have excelled both academically and as leaders among their peers. Will all graduates who are members of university and departmental academic honors societies please stand? Would you join, me, join with me in recognizing all of these graduates for their accomplishments? You may be seated. And now the moment you've been waiting for. We will confer the degrees. Will all candidates for the associate degrees please stand?
President Shannon, I present to you the candidates for the associate degrees as listed in the printed program. Each of these candidates has successfully completed the requirements of the degree as set forth by the faculty, and I recommend these candidates to you for the conferral of their degrees. Are you ready? All right. It is my privilege and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, I award to you the associate degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining, and I warmly welcome you to the company of scholars. Please move your tassels from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a big round of applause. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the candidates for all bachelor's degrees please stand? President Shannon, I present to you the candidates for the bachelor's degree. Each of these candidates has completed the requirements of the degree as set forth by the faculty, and I recommend these candidates to you for the conferral of their degrees. All right, what a great group. Here we go. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, I award to you the bachelor's degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining, and I welcome you warmly to the company of scholars. Please move your tassels from right to left. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a warm round of applause. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the candidates for all master's degree please stand? President Shannon, I present to you the candidates for the master's degree. Each of these candidates has completed the requirements of the degree as set forth by the faculty, and I recommend these candidates to you for the conferral of their degrees. Awesome. Small but mighty. Small but mighty, ladies. Here we go. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, I award to you the master's degree with all the rights and privileges thereunto appertaining and I warmly welcome you to the company of scholars. Congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. Please be seated. We will now call the graduates forward to be recognized individually. I invite Dr. Brian Corrigan to take his place to announce the graduates. Marshals, please lead the graduates forward. We now present the Associate of Science degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Sarah B. Gillespie. Uh, 
Alexis Rose Crooks. Gabriella Margaret Faulkner with distinction. Andrea Florencia Silva. We now present the Associate of Arts degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Kylie Hope McConnell. We now present the Associate of Arts degree candidates from University College, Jahaira Briones with distinction. Baylor Thomas Fain. Kimberly L. Wynn. Lexi Alice Warner. We now present the Associate of Science degree candidates from University College, Haley Lynn Barnes. Abigail Grace Collins with distinction. Gabriela Giselle Castillo. Ajiro Divieri with distinction. Devin Tanner Jones. Albany Zavarsi Angulo. We now present. <laughs> we now present the Bachelor of Arts degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Sarah Emily Baker. Charity Elizabeth Bankston, magna cum laude. Gabriella Faye Bartlett, summa cum laude. Noah Andrew Boland, cum laude. Nam Suni Bowles. Madison Marie Brown. Austin Farrell Berkey. Abigail Odette Burnham Summa Cum Laude.
Timothy David Burns. Kylie Olivia Carter. Joseph Benjamin Chandler. Ray Lynn Sifizari Magna Cum Laude. Braden Stephen Coggin. Lauren Elizabeth Cole Magna Cum Laude. Andrea Corona Gonzalez Cum Laude. Canon Jason Crompton. Diana Marie Davenport. Nicholas Alexander Peyton DeBerry Cum Laude. Eric Richard Delgado. Orla Ann Fennel Magna Cum Laude. Ginger Adelaine Foster Cum Laude. Abby Nicole Fuchs. Second Lieutenant Trevor James Galleon. Dylan Christopher Gearin. Ashlyn Brooke Jabot. Niara Imani Grant. Michaela Maria Grimes. Maria Olawo Bosaya Jaiola, magna cum laude. Second Lieutenant Safira Jean. Corey Dean Ginret Magna Cum Laude. Danielle Nicole Kent Magna Cum Laude. Daroksha Farouk. Khan. Jana E. Lawson Summa Cum Laude.
Jerry Lee Lawson III. Sinclair Pearl Lawson. Sebastian Alexander Lipsky Cum Laude. Morgan Joseph Makeley. Wit Allen Matthews Cum Laude. David C. McConnell the third cum laude. Riley Christopher McGuire. Mason Burl McKibben Magna Cum Laude. Nusha I.L. Maynard. Laura Lee Miller Magna Cum Laude. Han T. Nauk Win Summa Cum Laude. Christopher Alexander Noel Magna Cum Laude. Stephanie Ogenitegri. O Benny Sarah Marie Overman Cum Laude Brandon Ward Paget Taylor Diane Phillips. Second Lieutenant Jack David Rainbow Magna Cum Laude, Distinguished Military Graduate. Abigail Marie Rogers Cum Laude. Abigail Grace Roma Summa Cum Laude. Betsy Nazareth Romulo. Caroline Grace Ryan Magna Cum Laude. Jordan Carl Saville. Mary Rose Swanson Cum Laude. Ashley Marie Topham Magna Cum Laude. Sydney Marie Velchek. Brandon Thomas Waterfill Summa Cum Laude.
Lily June White. Dylan Sean Williams. Emily Louise Wright. Usamala Zalmiar. We now present the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Summer Neona Brackett. Elizabeth Peyton Holly Magna Cum Laude. Maisie Rain Howell. Karima Elvira Ramirez. Erica Jasmine Reyes Summa Cum Laude. Lindsay Taylor Tennant Cum Laude. Emily Kane Magna Cum Laude. We now present the Bachelor of Music degree candidate from the College of Arts and Letters. Dylan Arthur Eric Hoffman. We now present the Bachelor of Science degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Anna Catherine Adamo. Nasteha Ali. Second Lieutenant Luke Brian Bass Bailey. Caroline Grace Beach. Callie Madeline Beal. Mackenzie Elizabeth Becker. Anthony Jacob Blanchett. Rebecca Carly Blankenship. Cum Laude. Hannah Elaine Bobo, Cum Laude. Mattie Virginia Boswell. Second Lieutenant. Lorana Michelle Bradley, magna cum laude, distinguished military graduate. <laughs> Riley Lynn Carr. Kaylin Nicole Carty. Nidia Castillo. <laughs> v 
Valentina Ciron Andreas Magna Cum Laude. Eunice Jocelyn Cervantes. Adeline Lane Childers. Reagan Alexis Clonch. Claire Blakely Cobb. Elizabeth Ann Colley. Jacqueline Cruz Rosales, magna cum laude. Madeline Maria Cunningham, cum laude. Lacey Nicole Dake. Isabella Elaine Darwish. Madison Leah Davenport. Skylar Elizabeth Davis. Destiny Michelle Dempsey Cum Laude. Allison Nicole Essex. Elizabeth Ann Faulkner. Shara Faith Finch. Cassidy S. Flanagan. Elena Faith Fowler. Ashley in Fuller. Second Lieutenant Destiny Sarah. Gabriel. Nicholas Ferina Golter. Second Lieutenant Dalton Taze Goins. Nearly Nadai Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Casey Lynn Hargus. Luis Hernandez. Jenna Ruth. Elaine Hester. David Matthew Hicks, summa cum laude. Tiana Olivia Hoff, summa cum laude. Hannah Marie Hollingsworth, Cum laude. Catherine Ann Horn. Mary Elizabeth Houston.
Carter M. Johnson. Andrew Sterling Jones. Catherine Carter Kelly Cum Laude. Courtney Page King. Mackenzie Marie Kaiser Magna Cum Laude. Jesse Reed Cronin Magna Cum Laude Honors Program graduate. Spencer Kennedy Kuhn Cum Laude. Megan Kathleen Lally. Ella Rose Land. Second Lieutenant Brendan James Laprod, cum laude. Carrie Lynn Lee, magna cum laude. Alia Andrea Limuk. Cassandra Brett Liban Cum Laude. Kelly Elizabeth Love Cum Laude. Emma Grace Mathet. Daniela Marquez. Devin Alexander Marshall. Lucy Drew Little. Skyler Christian Sandusky. Brenda Fernandez. Christy Thewin Tran. Amber Lee Helpenstein. Gloria Mendoza Cum Laude. Faith McKinnon Cum Laude. Catherine Arnold. Parth Tushar Patel Cum Laude. Baboon Lee. Second Lieutenant Elizabeth Page Skinner. Grace Lillian Martin, magna cum laude.
Yahaira Haideni Martin Magna Cum Laude. Eden Victoria Massey Cum Laude. Caitlin Nicole Mays. Jacob Tyler McCormick, magna cum laude. Christina Grace Freedom Milam. Madison Lee Miller. Evan Miles Moody. Erica Maria Morales. Monica Morales. Lauren Michelle Mosley. Tori Amelia Mullins. Judith Murillo. Kyle Matthew Myers, magna cum laude. Leonora Marie Dow. Alexander Chase Nestor. Justin Edward Olson. <laughs> Kelly Brooke Palashish. Morgan Ashley Suzanne Parker. Ruthie Dari Pass Cum Laude. Carly Pate. Nisha Marche Perez Cum Laude. Shelby Marie Pierce, magna cum laude. Bobby Madison Pippin, magna cum laude. Duncan McCarroll Ray. Alanis Rivera Irizari. <laughs> Sheila Natalie Rodriguez. Anahi Rondan. Haley Marie Roop. <laughs> Nayeli Rostro Resendez Cum Laude.
Lauren M. Ruark, magna cum laude. Casey Alexandria Shell. Jenna Teresa Scott, magna cum laude. Yasmin Lee Seegers. Kenya E. Segovia. Samantha Erin Shiver, magna cum laude. James Ethan Steinbach, magna cum laude. Jessica Johnson Still. Renee Olivia Stone. Aliyah Janelle Tabor. Hannah Delaney Thompson. Maya Alexis Tucker. Jake Austin Turner. Gloria Estela Urego. Kevin Glenn Vaughn. Annabeth Guy Velines Cum Laude. Caroline Leander Walker Cum Laude. Ethan Taylor Wilkerson. Lindsay Lee Williams. Joni Elizabeth Woods. Hoa Yang. We now present the Bachelor of Science in Film and Digital Media degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Caitlin McKenzie Campbell Cum Laude. Sydney Grace Castellano Cum Laude. Giuseppe Francisco D'Alessandro Jr. Olivia Rose Depoe. William Emmanuel. Garland Cum Laude. Lucas Edward Oliver Hensley. Hector Medrano Cum Laude.
Naima Kizaya Mezios. Abigail Grace Osborne. Micah Joseph Page. Woo! Nolan Ryan Roth Cum Laude. William Christopher Smega. Erica Turubi Artes. We now present the Bachelor of Science degree candidates from University College, Second Lieutenant. Aaron Jonathan Allen. Emily Marie Austin. Rachel Lynn Brooks. Asil Dave. Maggie Marie Davidson Cum Laude. Christian Jacob Dover Cum Laude. Kaylee Eva Edwards. Sydney Marie Farber. Preston Clark Gauss. Alyssa Faye Holland. Kaylee Nicole Jarrell. Ashley Brianna Kemp. Anna Emily McKenzie Magna Cum Laude. Chase Rodney Miller. Second Lieutenant. Kevin Oliveros Aguilar. Second Lieutenant, Sombavana Gregory Sengsi. We now present the Bachelor of Science degree candidates from the College of Science and Mathematics Abigail Deanne Armistead. Sydney Lee Ashcraft. Byron Thomas Aspinall. Lexi Juliet Atilano Summa Cum Laude. Jordan Ashley Autry. Josie Grace Ayers Summa Cum Laude. Adam Scott Bartell. Wow. 
Madison Ashley Beatty Summa Cum Laude. Andrea Bonduel. Second Lieutenant, Belana Carol Bradley. Lindsay Nicole Buckner. Georgia Abigail Burkhalter, summa cum laude. Andrea Lucia Castillo, cum laude. Chandler Matthew Clayton, cum laude. Abby Ray Clendenin. McKenna Aaron Coyle Cum Laude. Haley Lynn Davenport Summa Cum Laude. Courtney Nicole Davis. Carly Leanne Dean. Julia Christine De James, Second Lieutenant Taylor Ann Elkins, Caitlin Nicole Elmore. Bridget Marguerite. Frederick. Austin Jacob Frederickson. Jonathan Rodrigo Garcia Barrera. Caitlin Marie Hammond. Cheyenne Dolores Higginbotham, cum laude. J.P. Hinshaw. Alexandria Renee Irby. Cassandra Elizabeth Jones. Erin Nicole Jones. Eduardo Landino. Jacqueline Lopez, cum laude. Haley Catherine McCaleb. Kylie Madison Merritt, cum laude. Casey Lauren Miller, summa cum laude. Madison Michelle Miller. Kayla Marie Neff.
Genevieve Marie Osher Summa Cum Laude Honors Program graduate. Sydney Alexandra Page. Jamie Pierce Magna Cum Laude. Caitlin Nicole Perry. Andrew James Queenan. Alexis Grace Rayburn Magna Cum Laude. Vanessa Kaylee Riali. Christine Amber Revis. Marjona Rustavoma. Selena Leanne Simmons. Nick Timothy Stoltz. Edward Anthony Searles Magna Cum Laude. Kayla Naomi Talbot. Brenna Erin Tate, magna cum laude. Atticus Lane Tom Show, magna cum laude. Taylor Ruth Turner, summa cum laude. Brianna Nicole Upton, magna cum laude. Nicole Marie Vandermeer. Parker Lee Warnock, magna cum laude. Joseph Kell Weaver. Itzel Joanna Zuniga Luna. We now present the Bachelor of Science degree candidates from the Lewis F. Rogers Institute for Environmental and Spatial Analysis, Rachel McKenzie Bell, summa cum laude. Bryce Evan Imbriale. Madison M. Rollins, magna cum laude. Joseph Aubrey Taylor. Joshua Powell Teague, magna cum laude. We now present the Master of Arts degree candidate from the College of Arts and Letters, Rose Marie Gina Luna.
We now present the Master of Public Administration degree candidate from the College of Arts and Letters, Elisha Nicole Blackford. We now present the Master of Science degree candidates from the College of Arts and Letters, Laura Elizabeth Montgomery. Graduates, congratulations. Let's do it again, folks. Let's get on our feet and give a round of applause for these incredible graduates. Graduates, we, uh, there is not a person in this room that is not proud of you. You have accomplished something that many people dream about. We are incredibly proud of you. Here's my charge to you, all the graduates, everybody look at me. You are all created for purpose. And your journey with us has equipped you to walk toward that purpose. I challenge you when you walk out of this door today to walk into your purpose and you will make legacy. Congratulations on behalf of me and the whole team up here on the stage. Now graduates, you now have a chance to extend thanks. So graduates, stand and I want you to give a round of applause to all of your family who helped you get here. Let's give you give your family a round of applause. All right, please be seated. Graduates, you are now lifetime. You heard Mr. Chalk today and his experience here 30 years ago, you are now lifetime members of the University of North Georgia family and our community. We are confident that you will make us proud wherever your journey may lead, and we look forward to hearing of your achievements. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Jared Patterson to the podium to give his congratula congratulatory remarks on behalf of the, new, the University of North Georgia Alumni Association and our Office of Alumni Relations. Jared. Thank you, President Shannon. Graduates, you did it. And not a single one of you tripped on your walk across the stage, so well done. Let me extend my personal congratulations to each of you, and I welcome you to our UNG alumni family. Wear that distinction proudly as you carry UNG with you wherever it is that you go. If you speak with any of our alumni, and maybe you know some, they will likely tell you one of three things. First is that time goes by very quickly. I graduated in May of 2014, almost 10 years ago. It seems like yesterday, believe me. I'm blessed to continue my connection to our fantastic institution, first as a housing professional, and now as your young alumni officer in the Office of Alumni Relations. 
It honestly feels like I've blinked and I'm suddenly a husband, a father of three kids, and an owner of a monthly payment that we, I get to call a mortgage. <laughs> I was sitting with my wife on the couch the other day. All three kids are running around, tearing up the Christmas ornaments we just put up. And I said, who gave us permission to do this? No one gave us permission to buy a house. No one gave us permission to have three children. But just, just know this, no one gave me permission to do this. It just kind of happens. I know one thing for certain, UNG has been part of me since I accepted my offer of admissions in 2010, and that one, that's not going to change anytime soon. I encourage you to always remember the impact UNG has had on your life, because life is too short to forget the transformational experience that culminates in today's celebration. The second thing that any UNG alum is going to tell you is their memories of UNG. Our alumni, like any proud alum, love to tell stories about their time on campus. Admittedly, I would be lying if I said if I didn't miss my days as a student here. I can honestly say those four years were some of the best of this student's life. Like other alumni, I met friends for meals here. I joined student organizations here. I played intramural sports here. And I met and proposed my wife here. When I moved down into Lewis Annex, just down the hill in fall of 2010, I ended up meeting and living beside four men who would stand behind me at my own wedding, all because we needed to fill out an intramural sports team. It would never have happened if it weren't for this institution. So remember your study groups, the faculty and staff members before us, and others you have met along the way, and how each of them have played a part in your UNG story. The third, final, and most important thing any of our alums are going to tell you is how proud they are of this institution. One day you're going to return to campus. You're going to see changes. Faculty and staff are going to come and go. Buildings are going to change. Traditions phase out while others are born. You might come back to campus and say, wow, things sure have changed. And that's fine, because all of our campuses are special just being the way that they are. Like President Shannon said, we are a family here, which as of today, you have become some of our newest members. And you are always welcome. So before we leave today, I encourage you to do one thing for me. That thing is to stay involved, stay in touch with our office, UNG Alumni Relations, follow us on social media, and come and talk to me. I would love to have a conversation with you, whether it's outside at the tent on the plaza just after the ceremony, or another day over a cup of coffee. UNG is special, you and I know this, and will always be a part of who you are. So let us know what you're up to. Once again, graduates, congratulations, and welcome to our family. Thank you, Jared. And now the last part of our ceremony and a very special part of the life and mission and work of the University of North Georgia. One of the many things that makes the University of North Georgia such a special place is our congressional designation as one of only six senior military colleges. We are the Army's senior military college. Our Corps of Cadets, situated within our Cadet Leadership Academy, is a signature all-Army ROTC military education and leadership development program and has been a distinctive part of the University of North Georgia's mission since our inception. Because you see, for one, more than 150 years, UNG's Corps of Cadets has played an essential role in strengthening our nation's readiness for a complex, ever-changing, and at times, dangerous world. The legacy and tradition of UNG's Corps of Cadets continues to be at the heart of the University of North Georgia's culture. It grounds our community in the values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and courage. It's now my honor to invite Colonel Brian Kirk, our professor of military science, to conduct the commissioning ceremony for our graduates who are commissioning as second lieutenants into the United States Army. Last night, in this very room, these graduates were recognized in a commissioning and recognition ceremony with their family and friends. Colonel Kirk. Ladies and gentlemen, for over 150 years, as President Shannon just said, this university has produced some of the finest officers for the United States Army. I am proud to be here with you to continue that legacy. Will the graduating seniors who have earned a commission from the University of North Georgia remove your cap and gown, move to the front of the stage, and face the crowd. As our commissionees move forward, I would like to thank the UNG leadership 
both here on the stage with me, as well as the amazing professors, faculty, and staff all across this arena and on the floor for their impact on these officers' lives. They will take your investment in their lives, the education you have provided from here in the mountains of Dahlonega, across the globe in defense of our nation. You have made a difference, and I thank you. The Army's motto is this, we will defend. These officers are prepared to assume their role, defending freedom. They are your sons and your daughters and your friends, and they recognize that protection of our way of life requires constant vigilance. Each generation inherits not only the rights and privileges of being an American, but also the responsibility to defend it. With Army branches, from aviation and armor to infantry, quartermaster and nursing, these officers will pursue their purpose while leading soldiers with over 200 job options. They will lead as part of a diverse Army that is a lethal and dedicated team with a profoundly important purpose. We do hard things and we do them well. If you're looking for a challenge and want to be all you can be, the United States Army is looking for you. Now the oath that these officers will take signifies their commitment to defend the freedom, values, and interests of our nation. The oath is not to a king or a queen or any type of sovereign. It's not to a political party. It's an oath to defend a collection of ideas that is the very foundation of our nation, written down and enshrined in our Constitution. <laughs> Lieutenants, this is a sacred oath because you may be asked to defend it with your life and the lives of the soldiers whom you lead. Now, at all veterans and those currently serving in the military, as well as our first responders, please stand and remain standing with me while I administer this oath. First, thank you for serving. I commit to each one of you standing around this room with me right now that these officers are ready to lead and they will demonstrate the highest standards of character as they defend our nation. Lieutenants, as you stand before your friends and families under the watchful eyes of those in this arena who have served, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. I, Aaron Johnson Allen. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating the newest second lieutenants in the United States Army. Thank you, Colonel Kirk. Ladies and gentlemen, our role as the Army Senior Military College is incredibly important to us, as you can see. And so I want to thank 
these young men and women for going and defending all of us in the future. Today, as we conclude, I want to especially thank all of our teammates who were involved with the planning and execution of this incredibly impressive ceremony and for making it a such a special occasion. Teammates, thank you so much. And I want to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Graduates, we're nearing the end, and I want to leave you with a couple of final thoughts. Once again, congratulations. I told every one of you I was incredibly proud of you. Today is a big deal. You've just accomplished something very big. But don't let today be your last day. Keep walking toward your purpose. I also want you to never forget that the University of North Georgia is forever, forever your home. We are your alma mater. And many people don't realize that is a Latin phrase for nourishing mother. Consider this university your lifelong home. We are always here for you, to serve you, and to nourish you. Take care, Godspeed, and go Nighthawks. I now invite the men's quartet to return to our stage to lead us in the University of North Georgia alma mater, which we're giving you a cheat sheet is printed in the back of your program. So please join us. Following the alma mater, ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your place as the faculty and graduates exit the arena during our recessional. At the conclusion of the recessional, Audience members should exit through the lobby doors to meet your graduates out on the plaza, and there's spectacular places for photos. Please stand if you're able and join us in the University of North Georgia alma mater. From the Blue Ridge Mountain foothills to the banks of Lake Lanier, memories of our alma mater we all cherish and revere. Seeking courage, truth, and wisdom, fires of loyalty abound. University of North Georgia, from diverse and solid ground. Standing tall, salute your history. To the blue and gold we rise. Look beyond the distant sunset. See the future in our eyes. To our school we bring you glory. May we always honor thee, keeping memories deep within us and our love for you and Jesus.